Update 9.1 has just gone live on the test server for PUBG, Xbox and PS4 and it is the most content rich patch we have ever seen on console. Let's take a look. So 9.1 appeared on the test servers overnight and it has so much stuff in it it's hard to know where to begin. It's got a bunch of huge changes in it, which I'm gonna try and break down in a bit of an overview today. And then over the course of the next week or two, I'll be putting out more videos, having a bit of a deeper dive into those specific features. So if you wanna catch all of the info about all of this stuff, make sure you subscribe to the channel where we put out loads of PUBG videos. And if you wanna ask me any questions, you can leave them in the comments down below or jump onto our live streams on twitch.tv slash thebeardguys. So the first new thing to mention that won't be a surprise to anyone is the new map Paramo going live on the PTS. This has been out on PC for a week or two. I already did a video showing some gameplay footage from PC and Paramo has now arrived on console. I'll put the patch notes down below if you want to read through it in more detail, but we've already done a video talking about that, so I'm not going to repeat myself too much. As a brief summary, it's a 3x3 seasonal map that we're just going to see for Season 9 only. It's 64 players, TPP squads only, no red zones, no bots on a brand new map. What is worth mentioning alongside Paramo is the new frame rate priority mode. Now, this is something that's been talked about a lot for quite some time. PUBG said they were going to put a mode onto the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro that would allow you to have a higher frame rate at the sacrifice of some graphics. And they've done that now, so the cap is now lifted to 60 FPS for those consoles, but your resolution is gonna be set to 1080p. This mode is now available for those two consoles, and you can see it in action in the background now as we run through some gameplay on Paramo, the new map, over on the PTS. Now, when I first loaded up the PTS and tried out the frame rate priority mode, I was hit with this horrible screen screen tearing that you can see going on on screen now. And I pretty much had this video ready to go out saying how annoying and terrible it was. And then I saw a tweet by our friend at Skilled ID. And what this said was that you can actually fix this issue by changing the refresh rate of your console. Now I've done this on my Xbox X. I assume you can do the same thing on a PS Pro. I'm not sure, but if you have a monitor that is capable of running higher than 60 hertz, I have a 144 hertz monitor, for example. If you go into your Xbox display settings and you change your refresh rate from 60 hertz up to 120 hertz, this seems to get rid of the screen tearing issue, or at least it did for me. So if you're seeing screen tearing on the PTS, give that a go and see how it works. Once I made this change, it was all gone. The FPS priority mode obviously it takes a bit of a hit in terms of the graphic quality, but you do get a much more noticeable improved frame rate. This seems like a really positive change and I think a lot of people are gonna enjoy it, particularly as we go forward onto the next gen. Certainly for people playing comp, it's gonna be great for them to be able to use the frame priority mode. Obviously it's only available on the advanced consoles at the moment, so that does restrict a lot of people whose consoles just wouldn't be capable of running it like that. But keep in mind, we are kind of preparing for the next gen. So as we go on to the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, hopefully we're gonna be able to see a combination of a nice frame rate and a nice looking game. Can you imagine? So fingers crossed on next gen, we will see that happen. I think when we get to that stage, more people who are now probably playing on the old Xbox One and the original PS4, not the Pro, may look to either upgrade to next gen or maybe they'll get themselves a nice cheap secondhand Xbox One X or PS4 Pro. So moving on to the next part of the patch notes, we have ranked solo mode and to go with that, some changes to matchmaking queues. As I had pessimistically expected, ranked solos has been introduced, but it is in TPP. So uh, personally, I think that's going to be pretty, pretty rubbish. I think that's going to be pretty boring. We'll wait and see. I will try it. I can't really picture that being very fun. And it seems kind of weird to have paired that with the release of the update that gets rid of bots essentially, because now you can play solos with no bots. So ranked solos is kind of just another TPP game mode in solos, but with less players. So 
I guess people might want to play it because there'll be a, a leaderboard and you can sweat out on that. But it's TPP. It's going to be lots of people sitting in houses, TPPing a corner, just sitting there, not doing anything, waiting. So personally, I think that's going to be um, not so great. I would have liked to see PUBG be bold and say, hey, we're going to make this FPP. Sadly, they've not. And um, as well as that, they've not only not made ranked solo FPP, they've in fact completely got rid of FPP mode in Europe except for squads. So if you go down to this section, you'll see in EU, uh, you now have FPP available for squad only. There's no FPP solos, either ranked or unranked. There's no FPP duos. There's just solo ranked, squad ranked, and all the others on TPP. So very disappointing to see that. Uh, I know FPP is not the most popular game mode on console, but it would have been a nice trade-off, I think, to have maybe dropped FPP solos unranked and just had FPP solos ranked. So again, disappointed. I wanted PUBG to make a bold decision there and I think they didn't do that. I think they followed the pattern that they always do without taking a little risk there. And I feel like if ever there was time to try something out for a season, that was it. As for the other regions, it's a little confusing what is available. On the ranked leaderboard changes here, it says that North America have FPP, solos and squads. But if we go down to the regional matchmaking changes, it says NA has just FPP, solo duo and squad and then solo ranked and squad ranked in TPP. So this kind of infers that NA doesn't have solo ranked in first person and the bit above kind of infers that it does. So we need some clarification there uh, from PUBG. But again, disappointed with that change. If it is available in NA, maybe I can use a VPN and I can play in NA for some FPP ranked, but obviously we'll be suffering from a pretty bad ping. They've also made a few changes to ranks. They've changed some of the spawn rates and bits like that. I'll let you read through that in your own time as we try and get through all of the content that is in this patch. So moving on to my favorite part of this patch, which personally is absolutely huge, is the custom match changes. Now there's two sets of changes here really, and they're gonna appeal both to people who play in comp and host comp events, and also people who like just playing silly custom games like us. PUBG has now added basically full configurability of all the settings we've ever wanted on custom games. You can go through and you can change everything. You can make it pistols only, you can make it pans only, you can make it so there's just tons of sniper rifles. You can make the circle be a square. You can make the circle close in five minutes. You can make airdrops rain down in abundance full of three weapons in each one. It's absolutely full of crazy options that you can change just like on PC and it's amazing. There's certainly some improvements to be made. You can't actually save presets at the moment, which is a bit of a shame and the sliders are really slow to move, but that feedback has been passed on to PUBG and it's certainly a big, big step forward. It's the biggest changes by a million miles we've ever seen in custom games on PUBG console. I am really excited about trying out all these custom game changes. Normally we do custom games on Fridays on stream, but we are gonna do some this Wednesday on the 21st, that's tomorrow. We're gonna play custom games. Lamb's gonna come over and we are gonna do a ton of custom games with all of these crazy rules. I would love for as many of you as possible to come over to twitch.tv slash the beard guys and help us play around with all of these crazy settings we can now change. Just bear in mind this is on the PTS so you need to get the test server downloaded if you want to join us and you can still join from Xbox or PS4. As well as the crazy settings they've also put in a whole load of observer settings. You can now have pretty much full control as an observer in a custom match on PUBG console. For anyone familiar with spectating in PUBG console custom matches, they'll be aware that there are quite a few limitations. You couldn't click around the map to move the camera. You'd have to fly under the map to make the camera move faster, which looked really rubbish. You couldn't detach the camera from player cam into free cam. And it was just a very, very limited feature set. Now with the new Observer features, there's a ton of new stuff and I'll try and cover it all. You can see it going on in the background. For those of you who run comp events, there is just a ton of stuff. So to briefly run through 
As an observer, you can now move yourself into an observer slot before the game starts, along with multiple observers. So when the game starts, you are automatically in the observer slot. You don't have to go and suicide and spectate from there. After that, you can then open up your settings and go into gameplay settings, and you can go to the bottom and you can change the speed the camera moves, as well as changing a bunch of different overlays, like being able to see what guns people are carrying, the little outline around players, the countdown on smokes, and all all sorts of different overlays and settings that you see in PUBG PC or comp. As well as that, you can also pull up a little menu to select from different players who are playing on the map and by clicking them, you'll instantly be taken to where they are on the map. You can then press X to detach the camera and fly away and this works every time, not just once at the beginning of the game. Not only that, you can also bring up the map and click anywhere you like on it and it will take the camera instantly to that place on the map. As well as this, there's also some nice little things, airdrops you can actually see inside them. You go up to them and you press X. It doesn't say left click mouse or whatever it said before. You can click on an airdrop and it will show you what is in the airdrop. So massive changes to the observer settings. Really looking forward to testing these out and then hopefully being able to use them in a live environment once the update is out for the third and fourth sessions of the PUBG console Carnage League, which I have been hosting over on the PUBG EU Twitch channel. As you can probably tell, I'm very excited about all the custom game stuff. Like I mentioned, please come along this week to our Twitch stream and join in some custom games with us. It's going to be so much fun. It's the changes we've been waiting for for years, and I can't wait to do some crazy custom games with all of you. So the last couple of tweaks are maybe not quite as exciting as custom matches for me, but they're still pretty interesting. There's one small tweak which you're probably aware of already, if you follow PUBG PC, and that is the barrel and the SLR getting a nerf. They've both had their damage reduced and some other changes made to their recoil. I think that's gonna have a bit of a change on the overall meta of how people play. I don't think it's making the barrel or the SLR bad, but it's gonna make the other ARs a much more reasonable possibility to use without compromising your game. So nice little change there to see. And the last thing that I wanna mention is the custom key bindings. This is something they did a small test on a little while ago that I didn't get a chance to see, and it's now gone live. And what this basically means is you can open controller settings, move over to the custom tab, and then you can set up a completely custom setup for your controls. Now, it's quite complicated. I've barely scratched the surface of this, but it does allow you to do all sorts of stuff. And I think there's a lot of potential for some cool setups. I figured out that I could change it so I could set a button for hold to crouch, which I've wanted to do for ages. I've just got to figure out what button I have that on, and then I can put it on a paddle on my controller on my Elite, and then I can make it so that prone is a different button I need to figure out what that is and then I need to make it so it's not B because then I'll keep accidentally jumping out of moving cars when I hit my paddle by accident. So that's something I want to get set up. You could also add all sorts of different stuff as you can see on screen here and there's also these little combination things you can set where you hold down LB or RB and press another button and you can assign those to either switch your throwables or to take meds. So you'll be able to make it so you hold down like LB and A, use a bandage, LB and X, use a first aid, etc., etc., which is a really nice change. I think a lot of people will use that. I'll probably put out a separate video on custom key bindings once I've had more of a look at it and we can try and go through it in more detail. Also, once I've got some more feedback from you at home. If anyone has any interesting ideas about how they might set up their controller using these settings, then please leave them in the comments down below. I'd be really interested to hear about it. And I'll also be keeping an eye out on the Reddit and on our Discord. So I think that covers just about every major point. There's some other small bits in there. There's some new stuff in the store. There's some bug fixes and yada, yada, yada. But that is the big stuff I wanted to go over. Whilst I am disappointed about the ranked solo FPP TPP thing, the wealth of other great features in there is leaving me feeling very positive. Like I mentioned, I'm going to take a deeper dive in some of these things over the coming days and weeks. So please subscribe if you want to see any of that content and let me know down below what you think about this update. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Ben. We are the Beard Guys and I'll see you next time.